I'm Grant Archibald. I'm a program manager in the Power Platform customer advisory team. And one of the kits we've released in December last year is the approvals kit. And I've got some links there that you can follow through. And we'll do a quick demo of what quickly set up what the approvals kit is first and then go through a demo of how it works and what it does. So let's start into it. Okay, so if we kind of look at the approvals connector, if we look at our large customers, 90% of those large customers in their Power Automate process are already using our approvals connector today. So it's something that we see a common scenario that we've got in when you're automating your approvals process that they're using the approvals connector today. And what we see, there's generally kind of three kind of personas in this process. One of the initial kind of personas is this Power Platform administrator that may want to go create Power Platform environments, set up your data loss prevention policy, and import solutions and set things up. Then there's this kind of approvals administrator kind of uh, persona where they want to go create and model approvals processes. And then the last one is just the actual approver themselves, whether in Teams or Outlook or in the Power Automate portal, they actually just want to make the approvals. So given those three personas, these kind of map to different personas we see with the automation kit in terms of getting people started and set up, somebody that wants to go and model their approvals process, and then the actual the people that want to do the approvals itself. And if we want to compare the two kits, one of the common questions we get is, what's the difference between the out-of-the-box approvals connector and the approvals kit? So the out-of-the-box approvals connector, you can do basic approvals. It is a generally available connector that's there today. Uh, the approvals kit goes and builds on that out-of-the-box approvals connector, but it adds a lot of other kind of managed components to Power Platform solution around it. So it goes and adds a Power App to enable you to manage and use low-code approval processes. It adds a set of Power Automate flows, and it adds a it stores all the approval process and the different versions inside Dataverse. And it adds a custom connector to make this process easier. So we kind of wrapped all that up on top of the basic connector, and we've released this to public preview in December last year. The kind of follow-on question from that is like, so why do we need the approvals kit compared to the um, approvals connector? So some of the things we see is you can go build custom solutions on top of the approval connector today. So some of the things that we see on top of that, though, there's common scenarios where customers need to go build solutions, a custom solution on top of that. So then maybe they want to hit uh, an approval history of like who made those approvals over time. They want to have an audit history around that. They want to create more complicated multi-stage approvals. They want to handle the case where somebody's out of office and they wanted to go delegate to someone else and may have different work days or schedules for people that are, are working around the world. So you can kind of build those today, but that's on you to kind of build those things. Whereas the approvals kit, we kind of bring all those things together into one kit and we use some of the premium features of Dataverse and custom connectors to bring that together. So that's probably some of the key differences from a high level. So what I want to do now is just kind of switch gears and show you an example of kind of what this looks like. So I'm going to take the Contoso Coffee uh, app in a day um, solution, which goes and takes uh, it's an application, it's a power app that enables you to order coffee machines. We're going to go create a process where uh, it goes and when you make the request, you get an approval that comes through to um, Teams or it comes through to Outlook or goes to the Power Automate portal to an approval. And if the value of that is greater than $400, we want to go send that to your manager. And based on that manager approval, we want to see what's the outcome of that machine request. And we'll briefly touch on you know, where they kind of delegate it, how you go set up your settings around delegated approvals. So let's quickly jump in and we'll go have a look at what this looks like. So as we kind of when we go through this here and we come and look at machine order. So this is the starting point. This is the Contoso Coffee machine ordering application. So I can go pick a coffee machine and I've got it coming to my user and go submit a request. So what this is doing is it's gone and saved a machine order into my database. And if I go across here to OK, I come across to approvals and refresh this. In about a minute or so, we'll get our approval coming through. So that, this is the one I created earlier. Uh, so I'll just go with that one there and go approve or confirm that. So once I've got an approve, it then goes, says, okay, the first stage, my first um, self-approval has been completed. 
And then because that first one is completed, it will send off a second request because the value of that is above $400. So this is my first submit for the one I just did here. I hit submit. And the same thing would turn up here, it would come up when it does it in Teams or would turn up into Outlook. So you choose whatever way. So you're just using your standard way that you'd see they're connected today to get that approval coming through. Go confirm. And if I go refresh now, we should see the above $400 approvals turned up because the values turned up. Now we've got to do a manager request because it's above $400 and we can put approve on this and we've confirmed this. So let's go have a look at how we did this process. So if I come back to this inside my Power Automate here, I've got just a Cloudflow and a Cloudflow is listening for changes to, uh, in this case, it's listening to changes in my database record. So when that machine order was created or added, uh, we kick off a request. So when this is uh, added, um, it saves in machine orders, and then we just kick off this defined machine request. You can see here that this is version three of the machine request. So the approvals kit understands there's multiple versions. So the author of this can go create multiple versions of this and as they want to make changes. And this is all just done in low code, not changing the definition of this cloud flow. You're just coming in, publishing this into Dataverse, and you go select which version of the process. We can then pass in information that came from Dataverse. So in this case here, we're passing who made the request, what their name and their prices. So that's all we kind of need at the simplest from a Dataverse point of view. So saving it, put us into Dataverse and from the Cloudflow. We then come back to what does it look like from a low-code designer? So we're going to go into that persona now that wants to go model the process. We come in here, we can see all the approvals that have been made. But from a designer point of view, we just go to the designer. We go pick the version of the approval process we want to do. So in this case here, it's this is the machine request. We open up the process designer. And in the process designer, it models out this is what that process was. So we've got multiple stages and nodes that refer to the different stages of this machine request. So this is using the similar approach that the Power Automate process where they come through and say, here's a stage where I had this first submit, we did a self-approval, and then I had this manager approval, and I could go edit this, and we could go change our settings around who are the approvers I want. I could change my delegation rules around whether or not it's out of office, or um, you know, when I have a timeout based on if the timeout's not done, I want to go have that sent to a, a my delegate if I don't respond in a certain time. So that's kind of a very quick high view of what the approvals kit is. I can go configure that and I can come in and set my basic settings if I want from a delegated point of view and say, okay, I'd like to go pick someone else to, so I may want to go pick Adele and have Adele as my approver if I'm out of office and I can go set my work schedules. So that's hopefully gives you a very quick overview of what the approvals kit is. And let's just jump back. So what we went through there was, and I'll just jump to the slide. We went through your learning path. You can go start looking at the approvals kit. You can look at our video that gives you an idea of how it works. You can join our monthly office hours. If you're that IT persona, you can kind of go look at, you know, how do you go set this up? There's a learn module that we have that can guide you through pretty much what I showed you there of starting from very simple application and building up multiple stage approvals. And then on the larger side from an instructor guide, we've got a, a way of saying, how do you how would you help a group of people come through this process? If you want to kind of dive into it, you can take that learning module, which kind of takes you on a structured path of taking you through the that process. So it takes about 30 minutes to an hour to go through that process. So you can uh, you know, set up that process. So that's pretty much where we are. You know, we've we're on a path of and continually improving this. This is an open source solution like we create with a lot of our other kits that you can use to go improve it. So as you join our office hours, we're going to talk through, you know, what are some of the things that we're looking at improving. So uh, welcome you to kind of have a look at the approvals kit, join the community, look at features that are important to you, and look forward to just getting your feedback around how you use the approvals kit.